Continuing our reading in Poppy and Rye by Avi, today is chapter 18, To the Lodge. Using her wood splinter as a paddle, Poppy pushed off from the shore. The raft lurched erratically until she found a way to balance it. Then, from a kneeling position, she dipped the paddle into the dark waters and began to propel herself across the pond. Repetitious cricket sounds tickled the air. From somewhere a fox barked, a night bird called, a frog croaked. Above, the spread of stars made Poppy think of a field of bright scattered seeds. The moon seemed to be adrift, as adrift as she. She gazed around, trying to get her bearings, trying to recall where the main lodge was. From the middle of the pond, everything seemed different. The moonlight did allow her to make out the humps of lodges as well as islands. They seemed all alike now. She had no idea which way to go. Poppy paddled some more, moving further over the pond, knowing she had to go somewhere. She chose at random and headed for one of the islands. From out of the darkness, she heard a splash. Coming unexpectedly, it made her jump. The next moment, her raft began to rock wildly. Only by holding on tightly did she manage to keep from tumbling off. When the waters calmed, she strained to look through the darkness to determine what had caused the sound. She saw nothing. What if it were a beaver? Poppy wondered. Would it see her? Dimly, she made out an island to her left. Its small size drew her. It would be easy to search, but after Poppy took a few more strokes, the little island seemed to have moved. Not quite believing what her eyes were telling her, Poppy stared hard. Sure enough, even as she looked, the island shifted again. She gave a few more tentative paddle strokes. Suddenly, the island moved and raised its head. Poppy gasped. It was a beaver! She had almost paddled right into it. Then to her right, there was another swell of water, and a second beaver broke the pond's surface. Poppy was between them. It was the darkness that hid her. And that you, Judy? Asked the newcomer. It's me, grunted the first. Who's that? Me, Joe. What are you doing? Oh, taking a swim to cool off. The lodge is hot. Yeah, hard to sleep. Hey, did you see that mouse? Judy asked. Oh, the one Cass caught? The beaver named Joe said. I was sleeping right next to his cage. What about him? What a pain, Judy said. If it were up to me, I'd just give him a swap with the old tail. Hey, you know Cass, progress without pain. Right, sure, Joe said. I'm going back. Okay, see you. The beaver named Joe swam off. Poppy paddled after him as hard as she could. Abruptly, he dove beneath the water. Poppy waited and watched for him to resurface. When he didn't, she understood what had happened. The beaver must have gone into the lodge through an underwater passage. She scrutinized the area. Sure enough, a large mound stuck out of the water nearby. She paddled until she bumped against it, then deftly leapt from her raft to the lodge. The movement inadvertently kicked the chip away. The raft was gone. She made a grab for it but the wood chip had already floated out of reach. Resigned to being where she was, Poppy took a careful look around. The lodge was a mass of sticks, twigs, logs, leaves, and vines, tightly woven together and cemented with mud. It made her think of an upside-down bird's nest. Somewhere inside was rye. Her sense of urgency renewed. Poppy returned to the water's edge and wondered if she had the courage to swim down and find the lodge's entryway. When she, rem when she reminded herself what a bad swimmer she was, she began to crawl about the lodge. She had to find a way to get in. It was at the very top of the lodge, while prying and poking around amid the mud and sticks, that she discovered a hole. When she put her nose over it, she was certain she detected a flow of air and the distinct smell of beaver or at least of Mr. Conad, a vent hole perhaps. Upon examining the hole closely, she found it was big enough for her 
to crawl through. Perhaps it could lead her inside. Nervous, she crept in, head first. The hole was pitch black and slimy, with a sickening stench of rotting mud. It was hard to hold on. After going down a few inches, she paused. How long is this hole? She asked herself. Will I be able to get out fast if I have to? What's going to be at the end of it? Do I really want to do this? She answered herself with one word, Rye. She had to get to Rye. She went on. To keep from falling, she pressed her paws tightly against the slippery sides. Down she went. It seemed endless. As it happened, she was concentrating so hard she came to the end of the hole without realizing she'd reached it. Catching herself just in time, she peered down into the lodge. Such light as there was came from the occasional flashing glow of fireflies. At first, Poppy thought she was looking at nothing but lumpy earth. Only gradually did she see that right below her was a room full of sleeping beavers. She gasped. There were so many. Some lay on their backs, chins up. Their teeth seemed to glow like burning embers. Some beavers were flopped over others. Others lay on their bellies. Tails occasionally flipping and flapping like loose flags. In their restless sleep, she kept shift, they kept shifting about, moaning, grunting, and growling. It was as if a large mass of mud had come seethingly to life. From her high perch, Poppy searched about for the cage Mr. Conrad had spoken of, the one in which Rye was being held. She found it tucked away in a corner. She even thought she saw Rye curled up in a ball, fast asleep. How was she going to get down to him? She dared not jump. If she did, she'd land right in the midst of the beavers. That was a risk she was not willing to take. Then she remembered something she'd seen on the lodge roof, vines. Perhaps she could lower herself down, but she'd have to work fast before the beavers awoke. Poppy clawed her way back to the lodge roof and searched for a vine. When she found two twisted about a stick, she took the longest. Working fast, she tied one end of the vine to a stick, and taking its free end in her mouth, she crept back down the hole. When she reached the end again, she lowered the vine. It dangled free, but it was impossible to see exactly how far down the vine went. Was it too far or not far enough? Poppy could not tell. Why was she risking her life this way? She asked herself. The same answer came as before. Rye. Taking a deep breath, her heart was beating madly. She grasped the vine tightly with her front paws, wrapped her rear legs and tail about it too, and headed down the vine head first. She reached the end. It was too short. She was dangling some 12 inches over the beavers. To go any further, she would have to drop and land on a beaver's nose. The thought of it gave Poppy the shudders. As she tried to make up her mind what to do, Poppy's shoulders began to ache painfully. She had either to let go or go back up. She looked up. The vent hole seemed a very long way up. She looked down. The beavers seemed enormous and powerful. What would they do to her if she dropped on them? More and more nervous, her palms grew sweaty. She shifted her grip. The shifting made the vine sway slightly. She tried to stop it, but the swinging only increased. Suddenly, she had an idea. Carefully, she turned about. Now she held the vine just with her paws. Her legs and tail dangled. Poppy began to pump her rear legs hard. It made the vine swing even more. Back and forth, she swung until... She was moving in a great arc like a pendulum. With every swing of her heart, her heart thumped. When Poppy reached the highest point of the arc, nearest her eye, she let go. Out she sailed through the air, right over the sleeping beavers until she landed with a plop in soft mud close to Rye's cage. There she lay, panting, heart hammering, trying to recover her breath. Had she really done it? Almost afraid to look, she lifted her head. When she saw she was beyond the beavers, she took a deep sigh of relief. She turned toward the cage. 
There was nothing between her and it. The way was clear. Silently, she crept forward and peered inside. A firefly flashed. She saw Rye. He was curled up in a ball, fast asleep. Poppy tried to reach through the bars to touch him. He was too far away. Rye? She called softly. Rye? Rye lifted a sleepy head and peered through the dark. It was by the light of a glowing firefly that he saw Poppy's face. Astonished, he squinted, unsure if what he was seeing was a dream or real. When Poppy said, Oh, Rye, how glad I am to see you. She knew she was, he knew she was the most real creature he had ever seen. And that's the end of chapter 18.